you could describe um, for us what the Art of Yoga project is. Well, we're a nonprofit, and we go basically we go into county detention centers, three local county detention centers, and we work with the girls that are incarcerated there. We bring a yoga and creative arts curriculum, which is sort of the cornerstone of our program, and it combines yoga, meditation, creative arts and writing, health education, character development, life skills, and we bring that to the prison system. And it's really part of a mandatory and integral essential part of their rehabilitation. And so what I mean when I say mandatory, it's not an after school thing. And it's integral, meaning we work directly in collaboration with, we're recognized as the clin part of the clinical team there. So along with mental health and probation and the courts, we all come together to figure out how to best serve the girls and to help them create a more positive future for themselves. So the, the curriculum in itself is meant to bring the girls to self-awareness, self-respect, and self-control. And those are our three outcomes. We're in San Francisco County, San Mateo County, and Santa Clara County. We also have aftercare sites, so it's important to serve the girls when they leave the prison system. Um, so we have places that we, where we intersect with them there. We have a mentoring program as part of aftercare where girls are paired one-on-one -on -one with um, Art of Yoga Project teachers that are seasoned and ready for that challenge to help her transition back to her community. And we have affiliates around the country that are, um, they have licensed, uh, we've licensed the curriculum to them and then we offer ongoing support. How many girls are roughly in the program at any given time and how many have been served? Over the 10 years, you're celebrating 10 years? Uh, not quite yet. Uh -huh. We start 2005 was when we became a oh, okay. uh, formal 501c3, but I've kind of been at this since, I guess, 98 in East Palo Alto. That's where I started. So um, I feel like I'm there. You know, it's been a long time. So how many girls? Uh, well, we serve, we've served over five, um, close to 500 girls a year since 2005. And at any given time, we have, you know, we have classes every day of the week. Um, so maybe, oh gosh, 150 girls mm -hmm. during the week. What's your professional background and how did um, just tell me about that. Well, it's been great because all the pieces of my life have come together with the Art of Yoga Project. So I, I was a neuroscience nurse, an RN, and worked at UCSF, and then went on to become a family nurse practitioner, um, and really wanted to, with that role, wanted to work more directly with patients, and I got my master's at, U, at UCSF as well, and worked primarily in women's health. I really had a propensity. I was really drawn to working with young women in particular. So worked at Student Health, the Haight-Ashbury Clinic, and Planned Parenthood, and different family practice sites doing primary care. And uh, so professionally, I was doing that. And that is really where the work kind of started, in that I would see a lot of young women come to me with um, many of the issues that we see the girls in the juvenile hall have, with like co what we call them co-occurring disorders, so along with their crime. So we would see girls that have, and I would see them with anxiety and depression and eating disorders and you know, what we called regrettable sex, or sort of the morning after and you know why did I do this and STDs, the pregnancy, all of these issues. And I really saw this sort of self-loathing that came along with it and uh, it it touched me. I thought, you know, this, why? This incredible person, these, these young women in the best part of their lives and they f have very little self-worth and that then I felt that their conditions came out of that. And at that time I had started my own journey with um, a serious study of yoga and practice of meditation. Yeah. Where did that come from? Where, what were the seeds of uh, that? Long journey with that. Um, you know, had some coming of age struggles in my life and um, different family dysfunction like almost everyone right and really started I was I guess I was a seeker you know at some point in my life I started realizing that I got a little lost along the way so as a young girl I was really creative and wrote poems and songs and you know you hear this about young girls and then they hit adolescence and puberty and they lose their voice and that definitely happened to me and um, you know, made some poor decisions, some things happened to me, and I came around and, 
and intuitively started looking for solutions for myself and got some psychotherapy and started doing martial arts and all kinds of things. Um, but what really worked was the yoga practice for me. Was yeah. yoga actually for you one of the, the sort of tools and practices Absolutely. that that helped you turn back Absolutely. onto your path? Absolutely. It was very profound for me in that I would get on my yoga mat and I would I literally went through this process of sort of coming home to myself. You know, I would get on that mat and I became acutely aware of my thoughts for the first time in my life. So that self-awareness and the thoughts that I saw there were not very nice. And that, so I had some grieving about that and then I set about to turn them around. Um, and then along with that I was, I returned to the creative, the, for me, self-reflective writing and brought those things together. And because they were so profound for me in my own healing and empowerment, I really wanted to bring that to the girls that I interfaced with in my clinical practice. How old were you when you discovered yoga? and kind of Not reconnected with your creative self. Thank you, that was my mid-twenties. I'd say my mid-twenties, so I've been at it over 20 years now. You know? most, of the, most of the young women that you're working with are, are younger than that. They are, right. and what so I wanted, yeah, I wanted girls to have it as soon as they can, you know, so that they would hopefully not have, you know, not go through some, some of the struggles. Mm -hmm. That was sort of where this all started, like, oh, if they could do this sooner, then they might, be happier sooner because I'm so happy now and I became happy and didn't know that I wasn't. Um, so the girls that we work with are um, unfortunately very young between 12 and 17 years old. Um, average age in the juvenile system is 14, 15. It's, you can't believe it. You look at them and you think, what happened? I know that, that you are working on metrics for figuring out how yeah. effective what you're doing is. Mm -hmm. um, so I wonder if you can just share a little bit about that and also, and I don't know if these are related, but mm -hmm. that the science is kind of catching up with um, what you have known and others have known you intuitively. So I'm curious about how those two things might come together, how the, how the, what the data is saying. Let's see, our own outcomes I think are really important because we could borrow data from the literature about how yoga can help kids learn and focus and help with attention deficit and things they've studied in kids in school and all that's really powerful, powerful and you, could, you see more and more schools doing that. But our own research, we um, work with Dr. Danielle Harris from um, Justice Studies Department at San Jose State and we've been doing research. We do exit interviews with the girls, case studies with our mentoring pairs, um, regular quarterly uh, interviews, regular quarterly surveys on an aggregate level, group level, but the most important and most rigorous are the pre and post that we've started doing and I'm really happy to report that we've reached statistical significance in the outcomes that I mentioned earlier increased self-awareness, self-respect and self-control. So the science, the science piece is crucial now because what they're finding out, so our brains are not fully developed until we are young adults. I think you've probably been reading that in the literature. It helps us ex understand teens a little bit better. So for these girls who have had significant histories of trauma, there are areas in the brain that are involved in self-regulation and personality development that are significantly impaired. And the som somatosensory activities like yoga, meditation, and expressive arts work to heal those areas so that their brain becomes more regulated. And that's what's showing up in the literature now. So the best way to explain that, I think, is that um, when we're in stress, you know, when you're, something happens, a car accident or something, we are really in our lower brain reactive centers. This is our brain stem. And you've heard people say, I didn't think, I just, did it. Well, so that's exactly what's happening. You're not really in your higher brain, your higher cortex, your cortical thinking isn't kicking in your abstract thoughts. Luckily you're not because you can't synthesize or hypothesize. You don't have the time to go there. So you're in reactionary mode. So for these youth, because they've been traumatized, they live in that place of hyper reactivity and what they call hyper arousal. They're in this state of 
hypervigilance. They're looking around constant. for threat, constant. They live and their hyper, their stress response systems are always at work. So they're not engaged in their thinking and that is why they make poor choices. So the yoga practice, the expressive arts, brings them, brings them back, slows everything down so that they can then make those connections and think before acting. I want to make one yeah. other point that I just read in the research that they said, so you've heard of PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. You hear about that with soldiers in combat. Well, they have, they, I just read a report that kids in juvenile hall have comparable levels of PTSD as soldiers returning from Iraq. Let's go back to you. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, I believe you are featured in, an, in a film called Yoga Woman. The project is, yes, yeah. and I have a little little spot in there, but the real star of the movie in terms of Art of Yoga Project is a girl named Sile. And so we have, um, she's in this film. The, the filmmakers are making a documentary called Yoga Woman. Um, they've made it and it's premiering all over the world. And it's very exciting. Annette Benning is narrating it. And she, so she narrates this film. And this girl, Sile, is followed in the film from her, when we were working with her in prison, and then when she's out, and then I guess six months later. And she's doing very well and going to nursing school. And it's really exciting for us to, to have that. Um, and that's showing on May 10th right here in downtown Palo Alto at the Aquarius Theater. So we'll be telling the world about that and getting folks there. So you haven't talked much about the art part of things. About um, So just briefly, mm -hmm. it sounds like there's writing, improvisation, and, and how, how does that fit in? And, and how does that fit in for, mm -hmm. well, and for you? If you can tie back to, yeah. to what that did for you. Well, I think um, the expressive part. arts is important because it really, um, for these girls, it, it helps them process their traumas. It, it also provides a really important alternative and healthy alternative to self-destructive behaviors. And I think that's true for me too. You know, you get into a poem and you're writing and you're not, you're back in and you're not thinking about what the world wants from you. You know, I think that's really a problem in our culture where girls are wanting to, to please and responding to their environment instead of staying with who they are. And the process of writing and any form of art for these girls and for myself is about finding their own voice and getting up and reading that poem and being proud of that voice and proud of who they are. And it doesn't matter what anyone thinks about it. Is the essence of yoga the same that's the, ec the essence of that creative arts process? Is it the same thing for you? I think so. So how would you describe so. what that essence is? I think that both of them connect you with your divine. So you hear that in yoga, your divine nature. And there's this process of peeling away, whether it's breath and movement or writing and, you know, painting or sculpture or improv or whatever. And you're peeling away those layers to find out who you really are and to connect with that best part of yourself. I, I think that's what yoga is and that's the, they're, they're linked so closely. And we see that and it also works really well because the yoga grounds and centers the girls and then and gets them connected with their creative unconscious. So the pairing is a beautiful marriage that way. How do you balance yourself in doing this work? Obviously you're extremely passionate about it. Yeah. What are your own practices that, that keep you fueled and centered and balanced? Well, I definitely practice yoga quite a bit at Yoga Source in downtown Palo Alto, my favorite studio. I'm there a lot. Um, so I do that three days a week. And as I've gotten older, really the frontier for me is the meditation realm and some of the breathing techniques. So I was using them before this interview, you know, um, and that's sort of a place that to be still is a little, is harder for me than to be active and getting strong and moving and that's really important to discharge stress but I think the meditation is the place that I really find answers you know they come Any, anything else in your in your um, kind of in your life that comes to mind that you wish people understood you know I think again with this work what comes back where it comes, it, that's really what's on the forefront of my brain is this work and I really want people to know that these girls need us and they've sort of been forgotten in a way or given up on in some realms and I think that 
we, we need to care for them and we need to stop this cycle um, of, vi of violence and victimization. We have to do all that we can to stop that cycle because these girls are getting pregnant. They're pregnant, we see them pregnant. So if they don't learn how to stand up for themselves, they are going to then pass that down and then you have intergenerational trauma.